sign at the time, but it does appear like maybe there's a, maybe a few more antichrists that have come around. Um, also, though, the Bible talks about wars and other things like this. I think that uh, there was a clip of Donald Trump talking about World War III. Um, some people argue we're already in World War III with the Ukraine war. But what is, what is your perspective on this, Ben? Do you think that do you think that we're already in World War III, or do you think that it's just kind of a rumor? No, I mean, I, I think it's very possible just because of the fact that you look at the way geopolitics are set up right now, and we're basically, like, at war with Russia by proxy through Ukraine, which is really scary to think about. Obviously, you know, it, it, I guess it just depends on what your definition of war is. Is it a hot war where the United States Army is invading some foreign nation and we're in some kind of nuclear conflict right now? No. But you could argue politically when you see what's going on behind the scenes that uh, there definitely uh, is a lot of back and forth in terms of antagonistic language between the United States and Russia. And it makes you feel like we're in some kind of conflict right now. It just hasn't necessarily hit uh, the military front just yet in terms of the U.S. Army going and invading some foreign country. But I will say this, that the Bible specifically mentions rumors of wars. And when you have guys like Trump and others coming out and saying, we're on the precipice of World War III, here we go. Joe Biden's putting us in the position for this to happen. It fits the description of what the scripture is talking about. Rumors of wars. Now, what about you guys, your perspective? Obviously, you know, there's always been a lot of wars, even in the 20th century. But do you, do you really see there being like kind of this big World War III as kind of a precursor or a big sign of the end times? Or do you think that it's unknowable from a world, like a war perspective? What do you think, Pastor Thompson? Well, I mean, I was just thinking about this verse when he was talking, and it's Daniel 8.25, it says, And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He, all, he shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. But I think that the, what we see in this world right now is a lot of policy actually subduing people more than guns and warfare. I mean... You see a lot of, you know, all these policies being placed as a global government. I mean, the global government is basically in place. It's just not fully sprung yet. But, I mean, we have a global currency. And, you know, if, if say, say some president in Uganda says homo should be punished by the death penalty, and then everybody in the world chimes in with their policy to try to subdue him. And then the United States says, we're going to try to make him... Uh, you know, do what we want them to do, and they do that through policy by not giving them money. So basically, we kind of support all these countries as a welfare system, and this, you know, and all these other nations. And if they go against the policy, then they're cut off with their money. So, Absolutely. I, I mean, I just believe that part of the the, the coming world war is going to have. I mean, there's all these policies will be in place. I mean, we got all this. Um, you know, this stuff about these tree huggers, you know, coming together to try to make our gas prices higher and, and pimp their stupid climate change garbage. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, th those policies are in place. I mean, they have all these accords and all these different uh, um, things. So, anyway, I don't know if I'm answering the question right, but I just think that, you know. Yeah, I'm just trying to speak specifically. Do you think that, that a war will be a big precursor, like a big world war or something obvious? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it would be. But, I mean, I just think that a lot of it's going to get done through policy. But, yeah, I mean, there, there's obviously the Bible talks about there being, you know, this big famine and all these, and because of the war, there's famine and all this uh, currency go, is, is downgraded. Yeah. And Peace like will be taken from the earth, according yeah. to one of the seals. Uh, people refer to the to that as the beginning of sorrows, uh, yeah. typically the first three and a half years of Daniel's 70th week. There will be warfare uh, for sure, and I think that will set the stage for the Antichrist, who will promise peace. Well, peace and safety, when they say peace and safety, then they're going to be destroyed. So, like, when Christ comes back, you know, their peace and safety, That's that was the slogan of the Roman Empire. And, you know. What about you, Pastor Robinson? When it comes to war, is this going to be 
something that you think is kind of an obvious sign of the time, or war is always happening, so it's kind of hard to, to pick? What is, what is kind I think of your thoughts on this? I think it's going to be hard to know for sure until the abomination desolation. I think that's when we're really going to know. But let's say we had World War Three. I think that could very well be going into uh, the fourth seal, for example. So you have the first one where you're taking peace from the earth. Um, but then you have the fact that a, cor- a fourth part of the earth is going to be given to be killed with the sword and all that. Now, I don't believe that necessarily means fourth part of the population is going to die, but more so the fourth part of the earth as far as geographically. So when you think about world war and just like the idea of like there's going to be war over like a quarter of like the nations, if you will, uh, and the fact that there's going to be that much warfare going on. And I think that really gets into that flood that's coming out of the serpent's mouth, and that's going to be swallowed up, but that's what leads into the abomination desolation, and then we're going to have the great tribulation. But I do think that there's going to be, obviously I, I agree with everything you're saying about the, the you know, the policies and, and how that's going to basically, it's almost kind of like, um, the Patriot Act and how it was kind of already written and it was already kind of in place and it took that act of like 9-11 for them to basically, all right, time to sign that. It was already crafted. It was already kind of put in place and, and that act of war is what basically pulled the trigger for it. And so I think all those policies and everything are going to be leading up to the fact of, okay, we have this world war, it's time to have peace, but in order to have peace, we've got to get rid of anybody that's against it. So you think that flood in Revelation 12 that's described there that the earth's swallows up is a literal flood you wouldn't say it's just figurative in your mind i personally think it's figurative oh, okay um yeah like it's, it's talking about armies gotcha like a like a flood of armies that's personally what i believe sure. about it i'm not saying there couldn't be well the, you the know? bible describes armies using the word flood over and over again yeah. including in daniel chapter 9 uh, yeah. where it talks about the end thereof shall be with a flood exactly yeah so when it says that in daniel 9 i think that's talking about like a, a world war in yeah. that quarter of the earth being basically encompassed in war um I used to believe that it was like the fourth part of the earth was going to be killed, yeah. but I think it's more so like a fourth part of the earth is given to be killed with the sword, meaning that it's more of a, I think, a geographical or maybe uh, a quarter of the nations or something like that are going to be at war. So that's, but that will lead into the abomination desolation. I think that's where we'll really know, because yeah. let's say we had a world war right now. It may not be the world war that's going to lead into the abomination desolation. I think my ears are going to be perked, and I'm going to be like, I think this could be it. But I don't know if even then, because we had World War II, World War One. you know, there's wars throughout history to where you could probably use that same argument and say, this could be leading into it. Oh, yeah. Um, if we were alive during World War II, all of us would be like, all right, it seems yeah, like I mean, he's around the corner. Hitler seems like he could have been an Antichrist figure. You got a lot of war stuff going on. I, I think that it, it could have been easy to think that. I, I think the flood thing's interesting because obviously Revelation 12, where that's coming from, is a very symbolic chapter as a whole. Like, there's no way to disagree with the idea of it being a lot of symbolism. I've kind of always leaned towards the idea of it actually being a possible literal flood, just from a couple thoughts of, like, number one, God promised that he would never destroy the earth with a flood. And I, I think that the rainbow and the flood is kind of significant, that it could play an end times role as the, the devil attempts to kill mankind through a flood. And then God prevents that, kind of showing his promise as kind of this interesting end times promise. And additionally, uh, when I think about the, uh, the, the way it's kind of worded there, I mean, the Bible talks about it's going to be like flowing out of the devil's mouth. I, I, I think about there's so much lies right now about this like climate change narrative and a lot of it is about how the the earth is warming and heating and it's going to melt the polar ice caps which is then going to create like rising sea and rising oceans and i'm just wondering like is it possible this is speculation 100 percent but just i'm like what if they just like nuked the polar ice caps like, what if they just sent a bunch of nuclear bombs? Would that potentially cause, like, a giant flood on the Earth where essentially it would just cause, like, a, a quick rising sea? And it could be, like, an attempt to just kind of, like, destroy the Earth while all these elites hide in their bunkers or something like that. I don't know. I, I'm just saying, like, I've thought about it. And, like, it seems like it's plausible that it could be a literal flood. I'm still open to the idea, like, you're right, it could just be a flood of men or a spiritual, it could, symbolic it, picture. It, it, I, 
I'm not against that, and it could be maybe both when the fact that you're dealing with that. I mean, I think about Job and the fact that God allowed the devil to basically take away all his children, but it talks about the devil basically bringing this, uh, is it an east wind or west wind? So the devil obviously can kind of, he has power over certain elements when it comes to nature. So I, I wouldn't be against that the devil has the power to do something like that as far as to maybe cause a big flood. And the fact, like you said, uh, God doesn't let it happen because he said he would. He said he wouldn't allow the earth to be flooded with water. I can definitely see how that would. Fit, well, and again, but. like the, the chapter, I, I think the emphasis is that the devil wants to kill every person. Mm -hmm. So, like to me, it's it'd be hard to do that when you have a, a, a flood of army because that army's not going to necessarily could kill themselves. But the flood's just a goal to just kill every single person indiscriminately, <laughs> kind of like Noah's Ark style. But, uh, you know, again, that's just my speculation. I don't know the answer on that or not. What I do think would be interesting is that if we're, as Christians, though, and saved, like, we would never be afraid of a, a global flood. Like, if someone said, hey, the entire earth's going to be flooded, us as Christians would be like, no, that's never going to happen. And it wouldn't necessarily, like, freak us out, whereas people that are unsaved or whatever, they might get deceived and, and be worried about you know, this global flood or something like that. But I, I do think that's kind of interesting. To, get, to kind of keep going down our, uh, our our list here of some some, some questions, I, I want to ask a little bit more uh, specific question on this war. Thinking about this world war, some people hyperbolize or think about it being maybe a war against Islam. Like, because Islam is really influential. It's, it's crept into Europe majorly. It's very anti uh, humanity people are very resistant to Islam also you kind of have geopolitically you have China and Russia who are also kind of strategically lined against the West if you were to say hey we're going to enter in the times pretty soon do you think it's more likely that the Antichrist is going to try and make a war against Islam or something more like a China-Russia alliance what is your what is your opinion Pastor Thompson and I don't know. It could, it could be all of those things, but it also could combination. Be, yeah, but it also could be. You know, it sounds like he's he's going to subdue everybody. So I mean, I, I I really don't know, but that is a plausible theory with the the whole Islam thing. But it could just be all haters, all religious haters, and we would fall into that camp probably at some point too, like right now. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I I don't know. It, it, so when I was thinking about what I was saying about policy, the policies will be in place, but there will be a real war. I, I really believe that. And as far as the flood, I mean, something happens between Revelation chapter 12 and Revelation chapter 13, and the beast is, is killed. He's yeah. assassinated and comes back to life. So that's, that. I mean, there's something warlike going on. And he's already, I think at the time that he, the mark of the beast happens, he's already conquered who he's going to conquer. And well, it he, could be retaliation. The next thing he does is he, he rules the whole world with the ten kings right after that. So doesn't he, but he betrays three kings, so I always thought it could be likely that someone from that particular kingdom retaliates against the Antichrist for having subdued, you know, three of the kings that gave him his power. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's hard to know. So, but, I mean, it, it is all speculation. I don't really, I guess I don't have too much of a speculation on that. Well, you know, we're supposed to be looking for these things, and I, obviously, you know, we look through a glass darkly when they actually happen. We'll, we'll all know the right answer. Um, but uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast this evening, Pastor Thompson. He's going to be preaching this evening, so we're going to we're going to actually swap him out with Pastor Mejia. But uh, if you want to check out Pastor Thompson's sermon, you need to go to bandbutnotbound.com, and you need to subscribe to their email list because we want you to be able to hear the Red Hot Preaching Conference. Uh, it's only going to be sent out through an unlisted link through the email list, so you got to get on the email list if you want to hear the sermons. you got to do 